Hang about, where are the planets? I can't see anything here. Bloody hell. <sighs> yeah. And that's how you'll be acting if you do astrophotography for long enough because it sends you bonkers. All right, if you're still with the channel and you want to keep continue watching this, I'm going to look at this continuing theme at the moment, being September, of planetary imaging. So I did a couple of videos, one a couple of weeks back, where I look at getting this scope, my C925 here, Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain C925, ready for planetary imaging. And I did a live stream, if any of you guys have watched it, after that video, and I um, basically took some video of Saturn up nice and high, about 60 degrees-ish, with this setup, which was the two times Teleview Barlow, um, which I managed to get second-hand at a decent price, and the ASI 224MC camera. So I only use one-shot colour cameras for these planetary images. Um, I'm a bit lazy, um, and it's all I can be bothered. <laughs> It's all I can be bothered to do at the moment. And it's a good way to start as well. If you're considering getting into planetary imaging, getting one of these like ASI 224 cameras is a great way to start because so long as you've got a telescope that's got a long enough focal length, you know, probably something approaching 1500 millimeters to 2000, something in that range, um, you get something like a Barlow, a two times Barlow and a 224, you're probably good to go. Um, so, What's the point of this video? Well, I took those images, like I said, um, and I stacked what was a reasonably okay image of Saturn. I was reasonably happy considering my setup and everything. You know, C925, it's not like a killer scope for planetary, but it's not a bad focal length. You know, obviously those people that have got C11s and C14s and those massive aperture scopes are gonna get better images. But it's, it's good fun taking planetary and it's always slightly um, or inspiring as well, just looking at the planets. It never ceases to amaze me. So anyway, where am I going with this? Keep babbling on. I've taken that image with the 224. Now, I do have this other setup here, um, which was kind of somewhat of an accident. Basically, I, I bought this ASI 482 camera some time ago, last year, and originally it was supposed to be used with my off-axis guider on this scope because it had those bigger pixels, so it would have been nice for guiding with my off-axis off guider. But because it's a planetary style camera and it's not a mini camera, it was actually no good for the OAG because I couldn't get focus. However, um, you know, the more I sort of thought about it and looked into it, rather than sell it, I, I hung onto it. And what I did is I got this Celestron LX. So it's a Celestron XL LX three times Barlow. And these do these guys, you know, these Barlows I think are pretty good Barlows for the money. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a Barlow that's not as expensive, because these Teleview ones new are very expensive. These are probably half the price, these um, Celestron um, XL ones. Um, but the point being that with the bigger pixels in this ASI482 camera being at 5.8 microns versus these, which is I think 3.8, um, it means that I can put something like a three times Barlow on these and I get that sort of, you know, that rough rule of thumb where we go for five times the pixel size and you want to be at your F ratio. So I'm going to be at F30, five times 5.8. That's the theory at least anyway. So I know I got some reasonably good images last year with this setup. In fact, I did look back on my last year's image taken with this exact setup and I think it was a better image than this year's image with the two times Barlow. However, I think Saturn was a lot closer, wasn't it, last year? So anyway, there's a few variables in there. But what I'm gonna do now is um, we've got a clear sky tonight. All the weather forecasts agree, so I'm gonna bank on it. And I'm gonna stick this guy in, this 482 and this three times Barlow. And I'm gonna take some, um, wait till it gets to about the same height, around 60 degrees. I'll take some video, some short video, like two minute videos like I did before. And, um, you know, I just thought it might be interesting to look at a little bit of a comparison. And, um, 
you know, after that, I'll just do the same thing. I will take that video footage and um, I'll put it through AutoStacker. So that's the software we use to stack our video frames and get the best it, the best few frames out of that, um, that video. Then I'll put it through Registax, another free piece of software that we use to then enhance and sharpen that image to bring out the best in it. And then finally I'll put it into Photoshop and we'll have our final sort of satin image. So what I'll do then is I'll just show the two capture videos and I'll show the two final images that I got um, out of Photoshop side by side. And we'll just see and see if there's any discernible difference. You know, it might help you guys, you know, might help you guys out there um, if you're looking for a setup. You know, just to explain my sort of um, seeing or circumstances, I'm in a fairly, fairly sort of suburban area. I'm Bortle 56. Um, you know, so I'm not like in a nice, clear, remote country situation or anything like that. Um, but anyway, you know, I think that's probably enough said for now. I will wait for it to go dark. Um, I may as well put this back in now and then um, yeah we'll get focus we'll find Saturn and we'll take some video footage so stick around and then at the end what I will do on this video is I will take um, I'll just put those side by side and we can have a look at what we think of the two images and see what we can see what we can see so thank you for um, for watching and stick around for I guess part two of this video Alright guys, so here we are post the um, post that second capture session. I did manage, luckily, right at the end of the night, for anybody that saw my live stream, I did manage to get sort of a two or three minute video towards the end of the night, which was actually looking pretty good, um, and then it clouded over. So that was the end of that was the end of that night. But anyway, let's have a look. Um, I've got on the left hand side. Um, I've just got open. These are all my images relating to the ASI224 MC camera and the Times2 Teleview Barlow. And then on the right hand side here on this frame, I've got the ASI482 MC camera and the Times3 Celestron XL LX Barlow. So let's just have a quick look. Um, I mean, this is not super scientific, but let's have maybe a quick look and um, you know, let's see if we can see much of a difference or anything. I know there's a lot to take into account in terms of, um, I know there's a lot to take into account in terms of viewing conditions, but you know, it actually seemed quite good at the end of last night and I had them both, both of these I got at about 60 degrees. So let's have a look at my, this one first on the left, the video that I actually captured. So this is with the, the ASI224, it's probably a, Probably a little bit dull, I imagine, on your screens, but I think the video, I thought that night, and I had a few people comment that the scene looked pretty good, and I thought that looked pretty good that night too. So that's the 
that's the 224 one there. Might bring this one up as well on the right hand side. I can bring this up. So I had a different orientation, but I did have a lot of wind, so this did not start off very well. This <laughs> this did not start off very well. However, actually I think the seeing was actually quite good because when it was settled, when the wind wasn't buffeting the scope, I think I took three minutes worth of video. And for the portions where the wind wasn't buffeting, it actually looked quite nice and um you know reasonably crisp. As you can see, yeah. It goes through a few different phases, but when the image there is looking settled, I thought it was looking all right. Quite a windy night, but I was pretty lucky to get an image anyway. So look, you know, that's the two, that's the two videos for what it's worth. Um, I'm going to close those two down. And then moving on, of course, I did the usual thing. I put it through um, Auto Stacker and Registax. So I think, let's have a look. Let's just get this resized a little bit. So this was the, this was the image here that came out of Auto Stacker. It was a little bit sort of soft looking and I did try a few different um, I tried a few different attempts here let's have a look at this one here I think I yeah I think that one was looking a bit better let's have a look at that one so okay so that was the stacked image out of order stacker which I thought looked pretty you know pretty nice I can't remember what drizzle I had on this, so I had a 1.5 drizzle. And then this, um, I think that one's been sharpened. This one was the, kind of the equivalent out of auto stacker as well. So, kind of interesting. I mean, from this to my eyes, you know, the 482 here on the right, and then they've got the 224 with the two times Barlow. Very similar. Um, maybe, I might just, let's just do that for a second, just so we can have a look at them on the same on. Yeah, very close to my eye. Um, I drizzled them both the same, so 1.5. Um, so, you know, I'll kind of, I don't know, sometimes I think the left one's actually a bit sharper, but of course it depends, you know, on zooming in and the colors are a little bit different, but. So that's through, that's passing it through, that's passing it through order stacker. I did about, from memory, I think I did 20% of the frames on each one because the frames were looking, you know, the line was looking pretty decent. So let's close those up now. Okay, and I mean this went through a few revisions as always happens with these kinds of images um, and the final image that I came up with for the um, 224 um, Let's just resize this again. This was kind of the final image on the 224 Now this was resized a little bit because um, I wanted to try and get it a bit bigger So, you know, I resized it put it into Photoshop um, and I think I resized it to double its original size. Of course, these images are never particularly big considering the, the region of interest that you're taking and the magnification. So that's the 224 on the left there and the times two Barlow. And then on the right hand side here, um, on the right hand side here was the 482. Um, now again, you know, it's always tricky to tell. Um, it's always kind of tricky to tell, I find, because of sometimes you, you know, you might 
apply different settings in Registax and you know etc etc. Um, I think I prefer the image I came out with on the right probably. I feel like I got a bit more definition here through the bands like um, through satin on these. Um, but again I'm not sure exactly to what extent that was my processing it in Registax. And again, both of these images now have been put through Photoshop. So, so yeah, look guys, I don't know if there's a definitive conclusion here, but I think it is, it's sometimes interesting to compare different equipment that we have. Um, you know, on the left hand side, of course, like I said, I've got the 224 on the right hand side, that's the 482. Um, and I think that, and I do think the right one is a little bit better. Of course, like I said, you've got those variables to take into account and how you processed it. Um, but I think both pretty respectable results. So, you know, you could say if you want to maybe go for a cheaper option, the, the 224 is a nice way to get into planetary. Um, and you could combine that with something like a Celestron XL times two Barlow, which are pretty, which are pretty affordable. Um, but equally, I guess, as you're getting up to these bigger sort of aperture telescopes and things, I do know that these these cameras that have got the um, you know the bigger pixels on them can can be quite um, you know can be quite interesting to use as well. And I think I got some pretty nice results, some pretty nice results out of that one too. Um, and I maybe I think I do maybe prefer that image on the right <laughs> a little bit more. Although you never know what I'll feel like tomorrow. So look, I think um, you know I think that's it. And um, you know, if you're looking at getting into planetary imaging, there's maybe a couple of options there. You can see the actual results there after it's been through AutoStacker, Registax, and a little bit of tweaking there in Photoshop. So um, yeah, I hope you got something out of that and um, I will catch you next time. Take care everyone and clear skies. <laughs>